Hey, what's up everybody? This is Zach King from FinalCutKing.com and today we're going over a fun little effect that's going to be blurring the t-shirt effect. This is something you know you see on MTV or on a reality TV show when they don't have permission to show the logo or whatever on a t-shirt. And so we're going to go over, you know, blurring it out. And this effect is simple, but man, I get emails all the time about this effect. So here it is. Also, you can follow along with the project files just by downloading them for free. And yes, by the way, there is a mouse on my shirt you'll see right here. His name is Vinny. He's my new pet. Vinny is his name because he first debuted on one of my Vine videos. Anyway, go down here to your mask when you selected your layer. And we're going to go to a Bezier mask. Now, sometimes, depending on the logo, you could just do a rectangle mask right there, which we could do. But Vinny will be cut out, so I don't want that undo. Uh, so let's duplicate this layer, first of all. Command D. And I'm going to call this the mask. And so now we'll select the mask, go down here, and we'll go to the Bezier, and we'll just draw our own around here. Now, he's going to be blurred out a little bit, but, you know, life happens. It's okay. Now, under your library, make your way down to filters, go down to the blur, and I'm going to go with the Gaussian blur. Really, you could do a lot of these. You could do defocus, but I'm going to go with the Gaussian, and I'm going to drag it on the mask layer. And nothing really happened because the effect hasn't been pulled up. So you need to go to your mount in your heads up display. If this little box is not here, it's going to be right here. You turn it on like that. But let's be honest, we're looking at that and we know that says YouTube. So let's go to our inspector with the Gaussian blur filter selected. You can see we have the amount and we can still drag this up like this. Okay. So drag it up to a reasonable amount like this. And then maybe what you want to do is go to your mask and feather it and that means it's you know creating this gradient of smoothness from the mask blur into real life the other layer so that's going on maybe we don't want to see the color because someone could say oh YouTube has that red logo so you'd come and add another filter this is just another option go to color correction and we would go to hue and saturation drag it on our mask let's go to the inspector and we can turn the saturation down like this and maybe you know Take out a little bit of the color to help people not realize what it is. Anyway, let's go ahead and animate this mask now. So my shirt is moving around, and what we need to do is double click our mask, and you'll see we can drag these around and adjust them. I'm going to go ahead and hit record. This this red keyframing button right here. So basically, you see what this does. I'm going to just show you with this one. I'm going to go start there, and by this point, that dot will be up here. Now watch, it just grows from point one to point B. If I open up command eight, I might be going kind of fast if you're first time in keyframing, but uh, you'll see what I'm doing. This is the keyframe editor, command eight. So you can see I can adjust it here or I could delete keys by selecting them. So again, record. We'll go a couple frames in and see if everything's all right. Yes, maybe at this point we want them to go down. And instead of selecting all of them one at a time, you can hold down shift and move them all at once, that's an option. So you'll see I've got these keyframes following it right there. It needs to follow, so I'm gonna drag it over here. Uh, these can actually drag over a little bit. And so now we've got this thing following. YouTube is still showing there, so like that, great. Now, again, this effect isn't meant to look great, but you may have trouble some spots where other things get in the way and you need to mask that out. For example, my finger, I don't want to mask out because really the shirt's behind the finger. So what we have to do is create another little section. You duplicate this and I'm gonna, I always name my thing, so I'm going to call this the hand layer. Let's drag it above the mask. Okay. Now we need to create another mask for the hand and it's only a couple frames. So we need to see, you know, maybe from this point right here, hit I for endpoint because we only need it for a couple seconds and then it's really only like five frames hit O for out point so there this is the only time we'll be masking out so what we're gonna do go to the first frame and go down again to the same thing in the beginning the Bezier mask and I'm just going to create this here also notice if I hold and pull it creates a smooth little thing so now I'm recording let's go to the next frame
and you're just adjusting these points along my hand. I'm going to go all the way to the point where my the apex of my hand, that just means the top when my the peak of where my hand will be. So the masking, by the way, is very tedious, and I'm not going to show you all of my masking. I'm going to feather it out a little bit. You'll see I'm going to feather it in. And again, I could do a way better job if I wanted to uh, take my time. If you have snapping on, you'll see that line grid hit end and that turns off. So it gives you free reign. You're going to want that. And then I'm going to go to the next couple frames and pull it down. So I think you get the idea of what's happening here. You need to go frame by frame and just fix this out. But you'll see my hand is now in front of the mask. And I could do, again, much better job if I spent the time and all that jazz. But you'll see, bam, that's how you get objects in front. You may even want to do it right here where the phone, part of the phone is showing. And so you would create a new layer, Command-D. I'm going to delete that mask there. And right here, just to quickly show you what you do, you just come down here. Bam, something like that. And there is your layer for the phone. So again, those layers go on top because they're in front. Think of the Z space and how that all works. And you see that little thing? We're going to feather that out. That's on our phone copy. So feather is a great tool. Use it well. And uh, that is, again, how you mask and how you blur a little logo. So you can't ask me anymore how to do this effect because I officially have shown you in a tutorial I hope you enjoyed, and if you actually want to see what this whole video is about here, why there's a mouse on my shirt, go ahead and click right over here, and you can watch that fun video, or you can watch another motion tutorial if you click right over here. Well, anyway, have a great weekend. I'm Zach King, and you can check out more stuff at FinalCutKing.com.